Hey guys, welcome to the video. So it feels so good to finally be sitting here to record my full review and recap of Camp EDC 2021. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have a podcast called Rave Culture Cast. Um, and this Wednesday, I will be posting my full recap and review of EDC Las Vegas. So it's a much longer episode if you guys want to get my full opinions on how the whole festival went. But today we are strictly focusing on the Camp EDC experience. So what's in store for you today? I'm going to share um, how my whole weekend went. I'm going to talk about everything from the check-in process to the amenities to the pool parties and the pre-party um, to all of the hot topics like no air conditioning and the water main break. So I will be addressing everything in this episode and I will be giving as unbiased of an opinion as possible so if you guys are ready for that please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so you never miss out on any of my upcoming videos all right so let's dive right in so just to give you guys some background um for me this was my sixth edc but it was my first time camping at a festival Ever. I have never done a camping festival, um, so it was also my first Camp EDC experience. So I did have some expectations going into this. However, given that this was a strange year, um, that EDC was happening in October, that we're coming out of a panorama, I kind of knew that we would have some road bumps um, along the way, but I do want to give you guys um, my full opinion of what happened. So let's start from the beginning. Um, my group did a Moonglow shift pod, which was the GA option. Uh, we also chose early arrival. So we arrived to Camp BDC on Thursday and we pulled in about, I would say, 1230. Um, a friend of ours actually drove, which was really nice. So we did um, pile all of our stuff into her car and we were able to do a Walmart pickup beforehand. So we picked up things like um, snacks, bedding, we got a cooler, uh, we got like alcohol, water, all that kind of stuff. So we weren't heavily providing um, like all of the cooking essentials and things like that. We were kind of keeping it light. So we did that. We got to camp um, and I will say the check-in process went much more smooth than I thought it was going to go and I'm going to pop up videos throughout this episode or throughout this video excuse me so you guys can actually see examples of how this all went but I was expecting crazy long lines because I've heard you know check-in for camping festivals can usually be crazy and security is really intense it wasn't like that. I would say the hardest part of check-in was dragging our luggage from the car to the Moonglow shift pod because a lot of it was gravel. So I totally fucked up the wheels on my suitcase. Um, I had a huge duffel bag and I had a pretty big suitcase is what I brought with me. So we actually had to do two trips to the car. We couldn't fit it all in one. Um, we did try to order a wagon at Walmart uh, and unfortunately they didn't have it available. So Pro tip, get a wagon if you can. If not, apparently... And apparently, Dad. I've never been on live Dad. television before. They do have wagons that they let you borrow, so I'm not sure who you go to get those from, but a friend of mine said they do have wagons, so... In retrospect, I wish we had known that. Okay, so like I said, first you go to the check-in area, which is where you show your camping pass. Uh, we had a group of friends with us that we wanted to be like placed near. So you do have to arrive together if you guys do want to like camp near your friends. So we ended up getting shift pods directly diagonal from each other, which was really nice. Then you go inside. Um, there's sort of this like walkway that was lined with all these flags leading up to the security line. So you do not do security in your car. Um, you do it after you do the check-in and it was a breeze it was really fast honestly they didn't check as thoroughly as I thought they were going to check which could be good or bad um, but they checked our cooler and looked at that they kind of like opened my bag and looked around but it was really fast so that whole process I think from the time we parked to the time we got to our tent I think it was like 50 minutes about so really nice um, I did hear there were much longer lines on Friday if you arrived so just take into that into consideration so we lucked out it's like first come first serve you really don't know where you're gonna end up with your shift pod so we got the sapphire camping so I'll pop a map up here um, we really lucked out we were very close to the bathrooms and we were the closest to the festival entrance so Everything was like pretty convenient for us. Um, however, we were very close to the RVs and they have their own sound camp there. So they have like their own stage. Um, 
probably one of my biggest cons for the whole weekend is the lack of sleep that I had, which two things contributed to that. Actually, three things contributed to that the most. Um, One, I chose poor bedding. I chose a really shitty pillow and I didn't have like the best mattress pad. So that was like a rookie mistake. Number one. Number two was the noise level. Um, I knew it was going to be noisy, so I brought earplugs, but even through the earplugs, like music was played 24-7. The people in the RVs were blasting music. I could hear the parties at the Mesa. Like you really aren't going to get that much sleep unless you're in an RV. And the third thing obviously was the heat. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Um, One of the biggest complaints everybody has is about the AC units or the lack of of AC units. So essentially, AC units were promised in the beginning as uh, one of the biggest amenities for your Moon Glow Shift Pod or your Desert Rose Shift Pod. So you were supposed to have AC upon arriving. And I was getting text messages from friends who were already there saying, there's no AC units. So that was like a whole thing. Apparently, Insomniac made the decision when they made the change from May to October that they were going to pull the ACs because they were anticipating cooler weather and they wanted to create a more sustainable event. That's fine if you had communicated that to the attendees. There was no, no one told us that. It was quietly removed from the website. So that was a really frustrating aspect because we didn't get what we fully paid for and that was like one of the biggest things so thursday and friday were pretty hot in the tent i'm not gonna lie all right let's do a room tour <laughs> yes <Bibi. laughs> oh i want to stay inside you can hear my heavy breathing oh shit oh oh no you got a power strip there Pretty decent space. I mean, BB's tall, so. Uh, <laughs> just for reference, I'm five foot ten. There yeah. you. Go. Um, but by the end of the weekend, we just kept the windows and doors open, and we slept comfortably. So it wasn't like it didn't ruin our weekend. And I know other people are really, really upset about it. It was frustrating, but it didn't, you know, ruin our whole weekend. We were still able to sleep comfortably in the tent. So. Very frustrating. They should have communicated that much, much better. And I hope they fix that in the future and they're more transparent with their attendees and they, you know, stick to the things that they promise that they're going to give you since we paid for that. So some of the amenities provided, um, they did give us a garbage bag and a recycling bag, which was nice. Um, You do need to bring your own tent locks. So that's something I messed up on. It was like a whole thing, but I basically like forgot to look up the code for my tent lock so that was a whole thing but there is a general store and a merch shop on site so you can pick up things like sunscreen earplugs you know first aid tent uh, locks stuff like that so you can buy stuff on site um i will say for the desert uh moon glow shift pods which is the vip um apparently their bedding wasn't set up and in years prior they get like an inflatable air mattress and they get bedding provided and apparently this year none of the beds were set up and they had to go get their bedding from like another location so i just wanted to throw that out there because that was not um that was something that didn't live up to the standard that they should have set so there were a couple things for sure with Camp EDC that felt rushed. Um, There was also a water main break on Thursday, which lasted a couple hours. So there wasn't any like flushable bathrooms or water. Again, it sucked, but we kind of were fine. There were porta potties and we ended up going to the pool party. So it was fixed by the time we like noticed there was an issue kind of thing. However, if you had gotten there like earlier in the day, obviously that was frustrating. But again, you know, shit happens literally. So you know, they fixed it and that wasn't an issue the rest of the weekend. I highly recommend you guys um, bring your own lighting and decorations for your tent to make it stand out. That was one of my favorite things about camp. People brought all kinds of flags and lights and totems and really fun stuff. Um, So you can make your your tent your own and it's easier to find it too at night. So I really, really like that aspect. I also really liked kind of like the camaraderie with the campgrounds. Um, One of my favorite things overall was like the vibes. It very much felt like this big like family reunion on Thursday day like I met so many people that I know from online so many subscribers like it just set the tone for the whole weekend it was just such good vibes at the pool at the pre-party um so I really enjoyed that Uh, I do want to talk about the amenities as well so you have the mesa which is at the center of the campgrounds and this is kind of like the hub for everything that happens during the day and at night so they had three main tented areas um one was like the activities tent 
So they did things like goat yoga, um, different wellness workshops. They had rave rave aerobics, which was so fun. Um, Shuffling classes, all that kind of stuff. One of the tents was like a get ready tent, which we ended up using to do our makeup one day. Um, They had a barber in there. That was really nice. So like they literally had tables set up with mirrors and plugs and you could go get ready in that tent. Really enjoyed that. And then the third tent, I wasn't in as much, so I'm not sure what was in there, but um, they were shaded structures just to hang out, nap, all that kind of stuff. Um, They also had a big pool. So there were two pools, the one closest to the pirate ship, which was the main stage, and one a little further back. Um, It definitely was smaller than what 2019 looked like. I think they had four pools at that point, but still like it got really crowded like the vibes were crazy people were nuts at the pool parties it was a fucking blast um I personally liked the sets all weekend there really was only bass music on Friday so there was house music for the pre-party and then for the pool parties on Saturday and Sunday and the morning after on Monday was all house music so I was really happy about that um production was really great the music was very very loud they had like lasers and lighting um in the one tented area for the pre-party on Thursday night so I got super fucking lit for that and it was an absolute blast um so yeah so I really enjoyed the amenities at the Mesa they also had art installations and different rides so we had our own ferris wheel there was a slide there was a roller rink there was a whole vendor village so I did some shopping I bought a pashmina I got my hair braided like I really thought they did a great job building this like mesa in the middle of a parking lot um it really really did feel like this fully immersive experience so that was all great Um, As far as food goes, they had tons of different vendors with lots of different food options. They did have a free water refill station. So you could easily like, you know, bring a canteen or hydration pack, anything like that and fill it up so you don't have to keep buying water, which was really nice. Um, Prices were pretty high. They were higher than I expected them to be. And to be honest, food for me personally was a hit or miss. Um, some of the food I had was really good. Some of it was not so good. Um, my favorite was the chicken and waffles, which was a food truck. I got that for breakfast twice. Fucking phenomenal. Um, they also had like separate lemonade and coffee stands throughout. And obviously in the morning, the coffee lines are pretty long. The coffee was very ridiculously expensive. In my opinion, it was $10 for like a hot coffee. Um, however, some of the vendors themselves were selling coffee for a much cheaper price. So we ended up getting like this massive iced coffee for like five bucks at one of the burrito stands and it was really, really good. So you kind of just had to like look around and try different things throughout the weekend. On average, though, the food was like $15 to $17 per meal, and I was buying like at least two meals a day, so it was expensive. Um, Alcohol, they had beatbox there, which is my favorite. Um, That was $15. They had hard seltzers, and then they had beers as well, so you could purchase all that. But one of my favorite things about camp, I will say, is that anything you bring beforehand, so we brought um, White Claws with us, we brought Waters, you can just walk around camp with that. So you can bring as much as you want and save a lot of money on food and alcohol if you bring it with you. People had the bag of wine and they were like slapping the bag uh, at the pool parties, like all that crazy shit. Um, They had ice there. So we forgot to bring ice with us. We could go buy a bag of ice. It was a little pricey, but still, if you forget things, you had the opportunity to get them. So that was good. Um, But yeah, food was like okay for the most part bathrooms so again we lucked out we were closer to the bathrooms near the rvs um i didn't have any issues with them every time i went in they were relatively clean um and if like occasionally you opened a door and it was like a clogged toilet then the other ones were all free uh lines vary depending on what time you go so it really depends but there are multiple trailer bathrooms and multiple shower um trailers as well so I recommend showering right after the festival um I think after Friday at 5 a.m Aid and I went and showered and there was no line at all um one day I went at like 10 a.m and people were still sleeping so that was good I had no problem with the shower again never having done a camping festival I was in and out the water was warm um so for the most part That was pretty good. I was happy with the showers and everything. Um, And then near the Mesa, they had those like hybrid porta potties. So the ones that are flushable porta potties, same thing. Sometimes you had to open a couple doors to find a clean bathroom. But for the most part, I usually like to go to the bathrooms that are like in the far back corner because those aren't used as much. 
Um, and they still had like sinks that you could wash your hands with and they had soap and stuff like that. So bathrooms and showers, in my opinion, were like up to par with what I expected. I did, however, hear reviews that they were not regulating the GA plus bathrooms, which are technically supposed to be GA plus and VIP. If you have a GA ticket, you're not supposed to use those. Apparently, they weren't regulating that at all and like anybody was using them. So I would have been pissed if I spent extra money for separate cleaner, nicer bathrooms and like that went out the window. So they definitely need to address that in the future. Okay, lastly, I want to go over some pros and cons. And again, I'm trying to fit as much as I can into a short amount of time here. So definitely check out the full episode of Rave Culture Cast for more details. But let's do pros first. So again, having done EDC five times before this, I always stayed on the strip and I was like pretty resistant against doing Camp EDC. And now after doing it, I don't know why. Like I, spoiler alert, I will be camping again in the future. I don't think I'll go back to staying in a hotel, mainly because of convenience. Like first and foremost, convenience. It took me 15 minutes to get from my tent into the festival. And again, we lucked out. We were very close to the festival entrance. If you were in a moon glow pod all the way on the other side, you had a lot more fucking walking to do. So like that is just the luck of the draw. But convenience, it was super quick. I didn't feel rushed the whole weekend versus like in a hotel. By the time we went to sleep, woke up, got ready, we would be like rushing to go to the shuttles or rushing to get an Uber. This felt very much on our own time. We got to go to the opening ceremonies every day. It was really nice. Um, Second thing I would say is like the overall vibes. I really, really enjoyed being around other EDC attendees hanging out with our neighbors, Um, you know, people were like letting you borrow things. And like I said, the pool party and the the pre-party, like all of the vibes are immaculate. People were having so much fun. Like it was really entertaining and really fun. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I thought the amenities for the most part were really great. Um, I liked all of the different activities you could participate in and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I really enjoyed getting my hair braided at Squad Goals Beauty. Pro tip, book an appointment in advance. They had a line and people were sitting there for hours waiting to get their hair braided because they did not make an appointment in advance. So just know you can book them on their Instagram. I just did that for EDC Orlando. You could just show up and wait, but you will literally be sitting there for hours versus booking an appointment and paying in advance. Uh, Some other pros for me, the early arrival, I would definitely do early arrival again, even though it felt like they weren't ready and stuff like was still being prepped on Thursday I still would take that over everything like the check-in went very quickly and it was great and I liked the spot we got Um, again another pro would be all the decor so all the tent decorations and lights and all that like I loved that aspect that's just like a part of the culture to me Um, and again the pre-party on Thursday night set the tone for the whole weekend like Everybody was so happy to be there. Everybody was having a great time. We were getting lit. Like I've met so many of my friends from online in person finally. And it just felt like a cool hangout kind of like with old friends leading up to the festival. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed the lineups for the pool parties. Again, it felt like a mini festival. Like I got to see artists that I missed at the festival at the pool party. So it kind of like made up for it in a way. So I was really, really happy with that. I also will say the Moonglow shift pod itself was really spacious. We fit four people in there with all of our luggage and we kind of put our luggage all around the outside and still had room. So it was very comfortable besides it being pretty hot. We just opened all the windows and opened all the doors and let the air kind of ventilate it. And then we were fine throughout the rest of the weekend and we had locks on our tent and I felt really safe within the campgrounds as well I walked around alone by myself I walked to the bathroom late at night by myself and I never like felt nervous so I did enjoy that part of it too and then cons biggest cons obviously that we didn't get our promised AC unit it would have made it way more comfortable Um, we still survived but it would have made it way more comfortable Um, you know the water main break again I really didn't notice it because by the time we arrived And then we were so distracted by getting ready. It was fixed by the time. So that food, I'd like to see better food in the future. I would also say I never had any issues with staff at the festival, but some of the vendor staff were like hit or miss. Like I had a couple rude people um, who were working like the food vendors. So that kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. Food was also really expensive. Um, So again, I think we would probably bring more food in the future. Even if we just brought breakfast with us, that would probably 
help because it was very expensive. And then the last two cons, like dragging our, I don't think there's anything they can do because it's just like a gravel parking lot. But like the actual walk from our car to the tent, just dragging all our shit was a lot. So we really need to get a a wagon in the future because like I totally ruined my suitcase and like broke the wheels on it, like dragging it through the gravel. And then lastly, the no sleep. Listen, you girls 30, I need my sleep to recover, to get through EDC. It's a huge festival. It's a big undertaking. And my sleep was so shitty that whole weekend. I'm, it's a week later and I'm still sick. So, um, the biggest thing I'm going to do is invest in a better pillow, better bedding. Um, and then I'm, I might consider doing the RVs honestly in the future just to have like an even more comfortable experience, but it could have been the location of our tent as well. So, Oof, that is everything, you guys. Um, I know I didn't cover everything. I've got a short amount of time here, um, but I will have more Camp EC videos out in the future, closer to May. So if you guys have questions, feel free to leave them below. Um, I could also do a follow-up Q&A video if that's helpful. Um, so yeah, so if you enjoyed this, please give this a thumbs up and I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button down below. I also have daily vlogs out. So if you guys want to see what the actual experience was like, I have a Camp EDC um, check-in vlog and then I have days one, two, and three up on my channel uh, and like I said I have a full review of the festival going up on Rave Culture Cast this week so I will leave links for everything down below uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye guys Fall into you.